Hello, hello, it's me, your friendly neighborhood, uh, cyborg. I'm wearing a really important product that I wanted to do a review of uh, for all of you today. These are the Aftershocks Trex Titanium Bone Conduction Headphones, and I wanted to take some time to talk about how they work and whether they would be for you, especially if you're somebody that has hearing loss, specifically conductive hearing loss. These might be a very, very good option for you. If you're somebody with no hearing loss, they might also be a good option for you, and I wanted to provide you some information to that effect. Um, it's a nice hot day here in uh, Central California, so if the sheen off my giant forehead is particularly blinding today, then I apologize for that. But let's take a look at the headset, okay? This is a Bluetooth headset. Um, I did mention it's made by a company called Aftershocks, and um, the official model is the Trex Titanium, and it's called Titanium because it has a nice flexible titanium band in it um, that's pretty resilient, and uh, it goes behind the head, and then these actually sit on your cheekbones and will conduct sound through the bones of your skull into your cochlea so you can hear the sound rather than through your ear canals. And it's quite a different experience if you've never had any kind of bone conduction uh, hearing test or anything like that. Um, they do not have a um, an eighth inch input. So if you're running out of a regular headphone jack out of like an older stereo, this will not work. You'll have to use like a Bluetooth dongle to bridge that. They're Bluetooth only, um, but that will work for most people with their phones and uh, similar devices like that, their iPads. That's really what it's made for. And um, I think to that effect, it works very, very well. Um, just some basic uh, other ideas about the product, other, other overviews of the product. Um, it is sweat proof, it is not waterproof. This isn't something you can swim with, although I heard they make bone conduction headphones that you can actually go swimming with. Um, I have sweated up a storm wearing these and haven't really had them malfunction or anything like that. Um, they also stay in place really well on your head. I usually have to tie my hair back a bit to get them uh, to really sit but they, um, they definitely stay in place uh, where they're supposed to be. And I've done all sorts of things with these on. I've lifted lifted weights, biked, I've gone running, I've done lots of different things where, where normal headphones would get popped out or get caught on something and these stay right where they need to stay, which is really, really um, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how they work. I mentioned they're bone conduction headphones and they conduct sound through the bones of your skull, but to understand exactly how they're going to feel, um, you have to understand a little bit more about how the ear works. So I want to talk just sort of briefly about that. So um, this is from Wikipedia. This is basically an illustration of your middle ear. Um, most people think of this outside part. Uh, this is called the pinup of, of what is your ear, but really the functional parts are all inside. Um, so the hole where the sound goes in, it's called the ear canal. At the end of the ear canal is what's called the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane is otherwise known as your eardrum. It's basically a very uh, stretched uh, piece of skin, and I've actually had a bunch of tympanoplasties on my right ear, all of, all of which have failed. Um, to try to cover up holes in that. And you, when you do a tympanoplasty, you actually usually take a skin graft from behind your ear and put it on the tympanic membrane to bridge uh, any kind of hole that you have. Um, and that works, it's called the tympanic membrane. Uh, it is, it's referencing the timpani, which is a drum. That's what we call it an eardrum. A timpani is a type of drum. You may hear it in the orchestra. It's the big brass kettle drums that have a very particular pitch. So it's stretched tight. Um, sound waves, which are vibrations of uh, the air molecules knocking together, they come into the ear, they vibrate the eardrum, then there's a series of bones uh, which then vibrate and transmit the sound to what's marked in here as purple, it's called the cochlea, which is um, uh, basically your organ that is gonna transmit those sounds into nerve impulses. Um, so we have three different ones, uh, they're usually called the malleus, uh, the incus, and the stapes. Um, I learned them as the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, and you can think of it like that. And uh, these sort of amplify and concentrate the sound waves for when they reach the cochlea. Now, um, but this isn't the only method by which sound is transmitted from the outside to the inside to your cochlea and then to your auditory nerves, which send them to your brain for processing. Um, you also will receive vibrations in the cochlea from your skull, specifically the mastoid bone, which is behind the ear. Um, and that's why if you cover your ears, you're still going to hear some stuff. If you cover your ears when there's like fireworks going off, you're still going to hear them to a great extent. Because although you're blocking the air and you're therefore preventing this tympanic membrane from vibrating, your skull will still be vibrating from the energy outside. Um, and that's the way these headphones work is that they have two transducers 
Um, basically, you could think of them as small um, speakers, but they're a little bit different, that rest on your cheekbones here and uh, deliver that vibration into the bone of the skull and thus bypass this entire middle ear apparatus. Um, why is this possibly a good thing? Well, if you're like me and I have um, severe unilateral hearing loss, my right ear, I'm, I'm basically totally deaf in because the conductive part of my hearing, which is the um, these three little bones in the ear, they're the smallest bones in the human body, um, they are malformed. Mine are, are basically destroyed uh, from disease, from childhood disease. Um, you're usually, if you have conductive hearing loss, it's the result of some disease, as opposed to other kinds of progressive hearing loss where, um, like noise exposure, that's damage to the cochlea, and that's a little more permanent and harder to get around than conductive hearing loss. Um, so if you use these, this just bypasses this whole messed up part of your ear and goes directly into the cochlea and lets you, you know, hear things, let you hear music. Um, this... Uh, is not a perfect way of doing it um and for but for people who have conductive hearing loss i think it's a really good option for listening to music or or talking on the phone or doing lots of things um without having to spend a bunch of money for like um a baja hearing aid so i don't have one of those yet maybe i'll get one this year a baja hearing aid that stands for bone anchored hearing aid uh, i know i said baja hearing aid but bone anchored hearing aid they actually drill a hole in your skull and they implant a little piece of metal that vibrates um with the hearing aid to conduct the sound directly to the cochlea and it's super high fidelity but you can't use headphones with that either right so if you have a if you have a baja um you put your headphones in your ear they don't work because the baja is taking the sound from out here and going around this whole middle ear apparatus directly into this swirly bit called the cochlea um which has lots of little hairs in it that each vibrate at a different frequency. Um, it's quite interesting how the cochlea works. The, the human ear is a very, very fascinating piece of anatomy. So um, do these work to that extent? Yes, they do. They work actually extremely well. So I do recommend them if you have conductive hearing loss and you'd like to hear in stereo. For me, I don't usually get to perceive stereo. Um, very well at least um, i usually listen to you guys can't see it in the on the camera but i actually usually listen to music on uh two near field studio monitors uh, that are very high fidelity and very very balanced output that's the way i usually listen to music and it sounds pretty good because that way i can hear both channels because uh, they're just out in the air facing me um but when i listen with headphones the right channel is basically dead i can't I can hear a smattering of random frequencies, but I can't hear anything clearly, and I can't understand speech in that ear through regular um, hearing conduction because of the, the breakdown of these bones. So for me, what this is, is I put this on, and not only can I hear both channels, uh, but I perceive the stereo as if I'm listening to near-field near monitors and have functional ears because there's a little bit of a bleed through. Um, so please be aware when you're using this, uh, the right channel will bleed a little bit in the left ear, the left channel will bleed a little bit in the right ear. That's actually kind of good because when you're listening to something in an actual stereo array, um, the channels are bleeding over each other. You're gonna hear a little bit of the left channel in your right ear and a little bit of the right channel in your left ear. Even if you have a perfect stereo setup and you have like a perfect 5.1 setup for your theater, you're still gonna hear a lot of stereo bleeding because of the nature of the way your ears are arranged anatomically and then the way the sound works. But with headphones, they're going just into one ear or the other. So if you've ever listened to, like if you listen to the new Slayer record, I know I talk a lot about metal on this, on this channel. If you listen to the new Slayer record, they have a lot of stuff where one guitar is panned all the way to the one one side and one's panned all the way to the right. Um, well, when you're listening to it on external speakers, the bleed through makes it sound fine as if you have one guitar player playing on one side of the room and one on, you know, right next to him. But when you hear it on headphones, it can actually be a little bit disconcerting because you're not used to hearing input only in one ear or only in the other. Um, so these will actually produce a more natural experience a little bit than traditional headphones. Um, so they're really cool in that respect. Um, let's talk briefly about the fidelity of these headphones. Um, they are pretty high fidelity um, considering. And the reason I say considering is because these are not a Baja. They're not a bone anchored hearing aid that's going directly into the mastoid bone, nor are they actually pressing on the mastoid bone. The mastoid bone is is the closest bone um, to the to the ear um, to the inner ear and also the the one that probably has the thinnest skin. They're resting on the cheek and if you're someone like me that's you know robust to say the least, I have like a lot of tissue on my face. I have a lot of muscle and fat 
on my face. And so these are gonna be transmitting through that tissue which has a deadening effect. Uh, so I put it right on my cheekbones where there's the least amount of tissue um, and they work pretty well uh, and I can hear pretty clearly. And of course, the more tissue the sound's going through, the more you're gonna deaden, especially the high end of what you're hearing. Um, these actually compensate for that really beautifully and have a really good crisp high end. Um, when I listen to classical music on these, they sound phenomenal. They sound extremely good. When I listen to jazz on them, they sound really, really good. Um, oddly enough, the kind of music that I feel like doesn't sound good on these is metal. Um, metal could definitely, definitely sounds worse on these than, than like my monitors that I'm used to. And the reason for that is that metal has a really high amount of energy concentration in the high frequencies and uh, a lot of high energy concentration in the low frequencies. Um, and if you, if you look at like a, I don't know, a spectrograph of most, any moment in any given metal record, there's like all the frequencies are really high up, but you have a lot of energy in the highs. And as a result, this ends up sounding a little bit distorted. If you turn up loud enough to try to hear all of those frequencies, this can sound a little bit distorted for metal. So it's not ideal. Now, um, these also come with uh, earplugs. And when you get these, if you get these, and you have normal hearing in one or both ears, you're gonna notice some very weird things. Um, if, you have, if you're like me and you have normal hearing in one ear and the other ear is basically deaf, uh, you're going to hear a really strong favoring of your deaf ear. All of a sudden, your deaf ear is going to be really clear and much louder than the other ear. And this has to do not with um, the way these work, but the way your neurology works and the way that your, your hearing works um, on a neurological level. And the reason for that is that if you're not plugging up your ears, and these come with earplugs, so you can plug up your ears. If you're not plugging up your ears, you're still accepting input from outside sounds, which is basically your, your auditory nervous system is gonna condense all the information, your cochlea is gonna condense all that information into like one packet of data and send it off. If you plug your ears and cut off that those outside frequencies that you're used to hearing, all of a sudden these sound very different. They sound much more present and sometimes bad. This actually has a compensation for that, uh, which is extremely good feature. So if you're gonna listen to this with earplugs um, to cut out some of the outside sound, um, you can press, the, there's, a, there's a couple of volume buttons on here, you press both and it'll change the EQ to cut the lows out. You plug your ears up and all of a sudden the low frequencies become very, very loud. Um, due to a trick of your neurology as you cut out the outside sound. Um, so you put in the earplugs and you press the buttons and then it cuts the lows and then it sounds like a much more balanced presentation of sound. Um, so let's let's talk about who these might be really good for. If you have conductive hearing loss, the kind of hearing loss that I talked about that is um, this sort here with the middle ear, um, then these are an extremely good option for you if you have it in one or both ears. Uh, and you should see an autologist if you have any amount of hearing loss or an, or an ENT. If you're suffering from hearing loss, you need to see an audiologist and an, and an autologist uh, who's an ear doctor or ENT uh, to determine the nature of your hearing loss. Uh, so do see a doctor. Don't just like get these to try to try to circumvent this. I, I, I seek medical attention for my, um, my ongoing problems with my right ear. Um, so do see your doctor and then they'll be able to determine if it's, if it's um, conductive hearing loss or not. And you'll go to an audiologist and they'll actually put a bone conduction device behind your ear that will determine, you know, is there a problem in these bones in somewhere in the middle ear? Is the cochlea still intact or do you have some other form of hearing loss? Um, that is present. And, and I, mo most of mine is actually conductive. I do have some exposure loss in my left ear. That's comes, that's part of being a musician. Most musicians have a, a certain amount of, uh, mild or moderate hearing loss due to sound exposure. And I also have some like, you know, inflammation of auditory nerves. Um, I, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of the, the odd duck out in the, uh, musician that has, um, more medical hearing loss rather than exposure type hearing loss. But if you're a person who has conductive hearing loss, these are an excellent option. They're not a cheap option. I didn't mention the price before. I think retail, I think Amazon sells these for 100 or $110, maybe a little bit more. They're over $100, but the they're, the quality is there. Um, you get your money's worth out of that. Um, there are cheaper options. I haven't evaluated those. 
Um, and most of the options that are out there are cheekbone rests because they're very secure rather than uh, mastoid because the mastoid, uh, it's harder to secure something onto the mastoid comfortably. Um, so there are other, are other options out there, but these are very, very comfortable. And like I said, very flexible, hard to break, and um, just generally very, very high so sound quality. If you're somebody that doesn't have conductive hearing loss but has exposure or hearing loss, these aren't gonna fix your problem. Um, they're not gonna fix your problem. You need hearing aids. And specifically, you need to see uh, you know, hearing specialists to figure out what frequencies you're going deaf in and what frequencies you have hearing loss in to compensate for that with a, a correct hearing aid that has a correct equalization for you to be able to listen to music or something else like that. There's a, there's a lot of options out there. So these are not an ideal if you have exposure loss or you have some other form of hearing loss, just conductive hearing loss that will help you. If you're a person who has no hearing loss whatsoever, these might be really cool. Um, they're cool because um, they don't plug up the ear. So if you're a person who like the ears, you know, having things in your ears really bother you, this is a great option. Um, if you're a person who the earbuds are constantly getting pulled out at the gym, this is a really good option. Like I said, to, I've, I've, I've used these at the gym and in all kinds of very physical scenarios and they work beautifully. Um, and I do recommend them for active, active lifestyle type people. Though if you have long hair, you might want to tie it back cause it gets kind of caught in the hair to try to put it in. Um, that's just part of the design of it. Um, so if you have no hearing loss, they might be a really good option for you. Um, now, there is a, an idea here that if you don't have your ears plugged up, that you're gonna be able to hear um, ambient, you're gonna be able to hear ambient sounds and the stuff that's coming out of the headset. That is actually not true. And again, it's due to your neurology. Um, imagine if you have um, a couple of, if you have your stereo on and you wanna, you wanna hear what is going on on the stereo. You have to, by definition, turn that stereo up louder than whatever ambient noise is in the room, louder than the fan spinning, louder than what's going on to hear what's going on in the TV. Um, and that has to do with um, your the way your ears work. Your ears gonna process the loudest sounds as what is actually happening over the softest sounds. And, and there's lots of reasons for that, but basically because your ear can only hear any given moment all the sounds that are present it's always gonna favor the loudest sounds. So if this is loud enough for you to hear over the ambient sounds, you're actually not gonna hear ambient sounds. So people who would like to ride their bikes a lot and are like, well, you know, headphones can be dangerous because I can't hear cars. Well, these are probably not the best option for that because um, to, if you turn up loud enough that you don't hear the traffic around you, you're not gonna hear the traffic ever. Um, you're not gonna be able to clearly hear what's in these and carry on a really good conversation without turning them down lower below the volume of whatever conversation you're having. So the idea that you're gonna be able to free up your ears to hear other things while you're listening to music, that's not really true and it has to do, has to do with the way that your nervous system and your ears work, not so much um, any kind of not plugging up the ear. Right, um, so if you're thinking that you're gonna bike with these and be able to hear the wind and the and you know and this, it's not gonna happen. Um, that's not gonna be the safest option for you. So just be aware of that. Otherwise, I uh, I wholeheartedly recommend these. Um, I am not being endorsed for this. Just as a disclaimer, these is this is something that my wife got me for my birthday, and it was a really good birthday gift. Uh, aftershocks. Trex Titanium, they also come in other colors as well. And there's a couple of other cheaper versions of this, but I uh, think this is kind of like the top of the top of the line model, which I definitely want for listening to music. Uh, they sound great with classical music. They sound great with most music that doesn't have quite as dense a sound texture as metal. They still sound okay for metal, but not as good as what most people would, who are really big audiophiles would be, would find acceptable. However, I like I said, for classical, I think they sound as good as any headphones that I've heard. And even for metal, they're gonna sound comparable to any, you know, like Skull Candy kind of standard run of the mill earbud type headphones that you're gonna get. They're gonna have the same sound quality. They're not gonna sound like as good as, you know, a couple of AKGs or something. Um, they're just not. Um, it's, it's it's the nature of the beast. You're, you're using something other than 
than air. If you don't meet any of those requirements I talked about, air conduction headphones are probably going to deliver the best fidelity for your dollar. Um, simply because that's the best way that the ear works. So if your ears are perfectly fine and you don't have any of these other issues and you don't want to try out something really weird, um, then yeah, stick with the air conduction headphones. They work just fine for most people. Make sure you don't have them cranked up too loud so you don't damage your hearing, uh, but otherwise they'll be fine. And just as a warning with these, you can still damage your hearing with them if you have them turned up really loud. So uh, if it's loud enough that it's causing discomfort, of course, it's probably too loud. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Um, so hopefully this review was helpful to a couple of you out there. I know hearing loss is actually quite common. So Aftershocks, Trucks, Titanium. Um, you can visit my websites. They're linked down below. My book is out, Muramasa Blood Drinker. So if you'd like to support um, the channel and the site, please read my book. Um, it's available on Amazon. It's only 99 cents. Great value. And it's got samurai swords and lots of fun stuff. So please give it a shot. And I, as always, do appreciate you watching. Please have a great, great day.